Okay, now we are on our new series called Wiki Church, right? Sino sa inyo, uh, you already heard of the name Wikipedia? Tasa kamay, mga may alam ng Wikipedia, right? Almost mga kabataan ng may alam ng Wikipedia, no? Bakit? Kasi pag nagre-research sa Wikipedia tayo tumitingin, no? Para nandoon na lahat ng sagot, alright? And uh, it's like an encyclopedia para sa mga matatanda. Parang Britannica Encyclopedia at saka Colliers. Nilagay mo sa internet. Okay, ganun yung Wikipedia. But instead of Wikipedia, or the name of our series is Wiki Church. You know, I've been in Victory since 1992. Almost 20, 20 years na ako nandito sa Victory, you no? Know? And we have changed. A lot of things have changed in, in the look of the church, or maybe the feel of the church, and even the makeup of the church. Dati pa na youth lang kami. Dati pag sinabi mong, if you talk about victory, it's all about young people. The music was really, really loud. Now it's just loud. Okay? Uh, before, you know, all our preachings were loud. Okay? And everything, you know, since 1992 I was here. And things have come and go. Fads have come and go. Even church fads have come and go. Kung anong uso sa simbahan ngayon, may revival bang ganito, meron bang curriculum na ganito. Ang daming dumaan na sa simbahan. But if there's one thing that has never changed in our church, and I've been here for the past 20 years, it's these two things that we talk about every single week, which is to honor God and to make disciples. This is who we are and this is what we want to pass on. Kaya for the next two weeks, what we want to do, na-realize ko, for a normal attendee, not someone who's active in church, not someone who's in victory groups, a normal attendee, somebody who attends church every week, would take at least three hours, travel time, be his, go to church for an hour and a half, and then go home. Three hours a week. You calculate that for 52 weeks, that's around 180, 170 hours every year that you come here, right? Grabe yun, daming oras yun. That's how many hours, right? 180 hours that you come and prepare yourself and you go to church. And our prayer is that for you, when you come here and invest those times, you really know what you're doing. You really know what you're getting into. A lot of people, they go to church and they don't know why. Why do you go to church? I don't know. We grew up going to church. That's why we go to church. Right? Sayang yung 180 hours nyo that you come here every year. Right? Three hours. Right? Just to listen to the message and go home. And if you don't know what you're entering into, you're actually not maximizing your time. And so what we want to do in the next two weeks is to explain to you who we are as a church and what we value as a church. And after two weeks, we want you to pray about it. Pray about what? Number one, pray. Is this the local church where God wants me? Okay. In short, if you feel like after two weeks, nah, I don't like this church, you can go and find another church. It doesn't matter as long as it's a Bible-based church also. Okay? Second, after two weeks, now you know who we are and what we value, you have to pray, Lord, how can I be part of this family? What can I do? to help advance the kingdom of God. Because when church was built, it was not built for you just to enjoy church, right? It's not just listening to messages, singing those songs, but there's something far deeper why the church was built, and that's what we want to look at uh, for the next two weeks, okay? Sabi ko nga, victory is all about two things. We want to honor God, and we want to make disciples. We call it the same old boring stroke. For the past since 1984, we have been harping the same message. We're now 28 years. Parehas pa rin yung message natin since 1984. We want to honor God and to make disciples. As what I said, I'm here for 20 years already. Every year, I hear it at least 20, 30 times that I have to honor God and I have to make disciples. Almost all of our leaders meeting, we have the same message. You have to make disciples. Kanina, we had our leaders' convergence. We invited all our victory group leaders here. And the message was this. Honor God. Make disciples. Right? Sabi din, wow, bago yun ah. Well, that's new. It's the same message that we share every time because later I'll show you why we're harping the same message for the past 28 years. And we have seen the church grown, not just here in Metro Manila, but all around the provincial churches. Why? Because of we are being faithful to the command of the Lord to go and make disciples. It's the same old boring thing. When I say same old boring thing, it's the same things that we do, but it doesn't really get boring. It's actually fun. Right? We had a member in our church in the U.S. They call him the chicken man. Right? Yung member natin na to, sobrang galing niya, para siyang si Dustin Hoffman sa Rain Man. 
that when you say my birthday is October 7, 1979, he would in three seconds say, that's a Tuesday. Ganon siya kagaling. Alright? Nakakalculate in a few seconds what day you were born. Right? Now, his job was to check the chickens. He was, he's in a line and there's a, there's, it's like a factory line and he gets the chicken, he checks if something's wrong with the chicken and he puts it back. Right? That's his job. So, grabe, no? So, when Pastor Steve met him, sabi ni Pastor Steve, don't you get bored with your job? All you do is stand and check on the chickens? And here's what he said. It's not boring. It's actually interesting. Why could it be boring? It's a new chicken every time. All right? What was he saying? What he's really saying, and this is what discipleship is all about. We're here about making disciples, but it's different stories all the time. Right? It's a story of Dave Estrera, Mike Ehan Santos, Jay Drew, and quack, quack, quack. May ingay. Okay. So, it's a different chicken all the time. All right? Okay. Meron ding mga processed chicken na. All right? That we, may mga hindi na chicken. Okay? And, and so, it's, we do the same things, but we hear different stories, and it's different how God moves and transforms people uh, depending on the personality. and they, So, sa totoo lang, it's really fun to make disciples and it's something that we really love doing as a movement. Right? Uh, when I was in high school, before we would have preaching tapes, we would buy it for 25 pesos. After a pastor would preach, they would record it and we'll buy it. There's one tape that I really love. I still have 30 tapes of preachings. Right? Some of my preachings that I really hate, that's why I hate it. All right? But I have this one thing by Pastor Luther Mangkau, who's one of our oldest pastors in Victory. Right? He shared a message in one of our anniversary. I don't know if it was the 10th year, 15th year. I don't know already. But the title of the tape was The Vision, Live, the Vision Lives and the Fire Never Dies. I would remember when I was in high school, I would always play that tape. Sa koche, sa, sa, in my own uh, room, would just play the tape tape all the time. Why? Because every time I would listen to that message, I would be so pumped up about church that I, I want to go and make disciples and I want to be a pastor already, even though I was in high school. I saw how God was moving through the church and I say, I want to be part of what God is doing in my local church. And that's why I became a pastor here and fling my life to ministry because I believe that the vision of the church is is something that God has ordained for us as a movement, which is to honor God and to make disciples. And the vision should live and it should be passed on to the next generation. And now you see new generation of young people coming in, taking on the same message to honor God and make disciples. And not only is that, they're becoming more passionate than ever. Kikita nyo si Dave every 4 p.m. talagang, God is love! Parang grabbing passion. Ibig sabihin, napapasa. Why? Because the vision that God has given us, our movement, is something that is so big that no one church can dominate it. We need the help of every other church and Christian in the body of Christ to do what, is God, what God has called us to do in our city, which is to honor God and really to make disciples of the city. Okay. I became a, one of the things that pushed me to become a pastor was when I was reading the book by Bill Hybels called Courageous Leadership. In his first chapter, he said, the local church is the hope of the world. What he means was the message that the local church has is really the hope of the world, which is the gospel. And the vehicle that God would use, if you look through Scripture, is always the local church. He says, the local church is the hope of the world, and it's true. You know, before when I was very young, I would watch all the impeachment cases. Oh, yung ngayon, may mga corona-corona. Hindi na ako nanood. Dati kasi, lagi ako nanonood. Binili ko lahat ng newspaper. I was into it because I thought if somebody would be impeached, the world, Philippines would change. And I tried to put all my hope in the government and found out later, it doesn't work that way. That the way for this nation to change is if the local church embraces its vision and mission to go and make disciples of all nations. Right? The local church is the hope of the world. And I hope you get that. I hope when you come here, you don't just come here wanting to get something from the message or from the fellowship that you would have among family and friends. But really, you would look at this and say, this is my local church. It means when we say local church, I'm not talking about a building, I'm talking about people. Right? 
When you say, I'm a member of this church, and I love this church, and, and this is my family, what you're saying is, I'm no longer a visitor, but now I'm part of this. In short, you've got to have some responsibilities. It can't, you're not a guest anymore if you say, this is my local church. You have a responsibility to play. In short, when I come here, what we want to break for the next two weeks is for us not to think that we are consumers. Don't treat the church like it's some grocery thing that you come here and take what you want and complain of the things that you don't like about the church, but really coming here as a producer and saying the message that I hear is something that I want to spread out there. And that's the basis of Wiki Church, right? Ano ba yung history ng Wiki Church? No? It came from the word Wikipedia, right? There were two men. Uh, um, I, the name of the guy was Jimmy Wells and Larry uh, Sanger who started an online en- encyclopedia called we- Newpedia. Okay? Before Wikipedia, there was Newpedia. The goal was for it to include contributions written only by experts. After three years, due to the rigorous review process, they were only able to post 24 articles. From 2001 to 2004, 24 articles, and there were still 78 articles to be reviewed. They couldn't post it because it had to go through, this, through the hands of experts for it to even spread. So in just a matter of three years, they closed down Newpedia. But they had another side project, and they called it Wikipedia. Wiki came from the Hawaiian word quick. All right? And so they say, they said, let's make Wikipedia a feeder of information. People would give to Wikipedia, let's get what we want, feed it to the process of Newpedia, and Newpedia would post it. What happened was, just on the first year alone, they had 20,000 articles in Newpedia, written by normal people just like you and me. Those who wanted to write a contribution to Wikipedia was free to email whatever it is they've written about a certain topic. Right? So yung expert took 24 articles in three years, while when you empower the people, you get 20,000 articles on Wikipedia. What that means is Newpedia is expert-driven, while Wikipedia is empowering the people to spread the news. This is how we want our church to be, to be a wiki church and not a new P church. Okay? Pangit na. Okay, new P church. Okay? We don't want to be a church run by experts. You see, for the past four years, you only have four pastors. Right? And we're, we don't intend to hire more pastors as of now. Right? We just have four. From 300, 400, now we're 2,000 in just a matter of four years. And we just have four pastors. Why? Because this church is not run by experts. In fact, we're not even experts. We're just professionals. Because we're getting paid to do this. What I'm saying is, the church is not run by us. It's run by people. We have 600 to 700 volunteers every month that runs this church. Free of charge. No pay, no lunch, no snacks. Sometimes only when there's potluck. In short, we're not even paying people to help in this church. They help. We have, all, we have 192 victory group leaders that meets every week and makes, makes disciples. And you say, this is because the church is growing because of the pastors. It's not. All right? It doesn't really matter who's preaching up here. The reason for the growth that we're seeing and the miracles that God is doing in this church is because people have embraced the vision. They say, yes, I want to go and make disciples. And that is the reason we're growing as a church because we're empowering people to go and make disciples. It is not the man of God syndrome. Ang victory hindi ang tinayo with one man in mind. That's why up until now, some of you don't even know Pastor Steve. See, Pastor Steve Merle, which is the president of Every Nation and the senior pastor of Victory Philippines. Some of you haven't even talked to him yet. Some of you, hindi nyo pa nga friends sa Facebook. Because you don't know who he is. When you say victory, you wouldn't know who's the leader. R- why? Because we've empowered people to go and do this. We have 16 uh, Metro Manila churches here in Victory. And what we always say is that we're one church in many congregations. So it doesn't matter. 
I preach two services every Sunday. Pastor Jason preaches two services. Nobody's a superstar. In short, everybody here, what we want is a culture of empowerment where we would see the next generation and other people who have the gift to unleash the gifts that God has given them so that they could go and make disciples. We have one uh, guy from Utah, si Nick Bilangdal, no? Si Nick went to Utah, did not attend, uh, there was no Every Nation Church in Utah, no Victory Church there. So he attended another church. When he started attending the church, he started making disciples. What we usually do here is start a victory group. So this, he started a small group in Utah. And it started growing. And because of his group, the church was growing. So the senior pastor said, Nick, what are you doing? How come there's so many new people? All right? And Nick said, I'm just doing what I was told to do when I was in Manila, which is really to go and make disciples. So the pastor said, Nick, who can I talk to in, in, in your church in Manila? And so the pastor started Googling victory. But they had a hard time to contact, uh, to know who to contact because there was no one name that would pop out in victory. You put victory, it was so many names. So what they had to do was to email our head office and say, we want to know what you're doing here. Three weeks ago, they f flew over from Utah to, to Manila and we were able to meet up with them. And they started traveling different victory churches. And here's what they say observation from someone from outside. He said, we are amazed because everywhere we go, we go to Galleria, we go to Alabang, we go to U-Belt and interview your leaders and they say the same thing. That they exist to honor God and they're just there to make disciples. And up until now, they really don't know who's the head of this thing. Why? Because we've empowered people to do it. Like it gets you, right? Right? This is not a one-man show. This is not a pastor show. This is all of us doing the work of Christ because we can't do this. We're too little. We're too small to even make a dent. We need everyone to be part of what God is doing. Pastor Steve in his book, Wiki Church, said this. Imagine if every believer, not just paid leaders, were engaged in ministry. That, I believe, is the call of the church, to empower imperfect people to spread the most important message around the world. You know, this is such a powerful statement. Imagine if all of us here, we're 700 here in this room. Imagine if all of us, and I do pray all of us, would just get this. If all of us were engaged in ministry, that you go back to your office with, with the verse, I am the light of the world in mind. And Matthew 28, go and make disciples. Imagine what impact we would have as a church. When all of us won't be consumers, but producers, and go out there and really make disciples, and really follow the last words and commission of Christ for us to go and make disciples. Imagine yung grabe yung church. Grabe lang yung impact natin. Pag lahat tayo, isa, dalawa, tatlo, di-disciple natin, aalis tayo dito, dahil alam natin hindi ito about us, but really about reaching the lost people we would make such an impact and change in our nation. That is, if all of us would want to do that. Right? That's why we want to challenge you. Matthew, this is how Jesus described the church. Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What Jesus was saying, I will build the church, it is I, Jesus, not the pastor, not the people. Jesus will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against what the church is about to do. Okay? What he was saying is for us to save the world, the church has to be in motion. Ang church gumagalaw. Gates, they don't move. Have you seen a gate that move? Yes, when Indai opens it. No? But you won't see a gate move. All right. In short, gates are stationary. All right? It is the job of the church to advance the kingdom of God and break the fortresses that, the, that hell has tried to put in the entertainment industry, in the, campus ministry, in the campuses, in, in the government. Our job is to go out there and make disciples. Our job is to pray, and our job is to go in and make disciples. That's how you break it. Right? That's why we've been praying. Kaya tayo nagpe-pray palagi dito. Lord, open the doors for us in the campuses. We've been praying for how many years? Four years already. And for the past two years, God is opening doors for us. In short, now, the only university in San Juan, we're inside. We're a recognized organization inside the school. And we now have disciples inside the school. 
All right? And they're making an impact and an influence in PUP San Juan. We now have people ministering to 200 students in San Juan National High School. Ibig sabihin, Satan has put gates there and saying, the campus is mine and the church is saying, no, it's not yours, it's ours, and it's ours for the taking. Get out of there because we're advancing the kingdom of God. And so all you need to do is call in Dai and she, he'll open the door and you come in. All right? Nag-gets nyo? All right? Yung mga kondo, hindi nyo mag-gets yan, no? Okay, wala kayong gate. All right? Tawag nyo lang sa guard. Okay. Guard. Okay. Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. These were the last words of Jesus. Last words are so important. How among you here, you have a relative on the deathbed, and you know the last words are so important. Dave, bayaran mo utang ko. Diba? Importante yon. Okay? Huling habilin yon, di ba? It's the last words and it's so important that I need to hear this because I am going to do it with all my strength. And what Christ was saying, and this was His last words before going up to heaven, go and make disciples. Teach them everything I have commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Now when you read Matthew 28, 19 to 20, the context was Jesus was talking to His disciples and a few hundred people. And the context was the world has never heard the gospel. And he's, he's come now for the last huddle, and he says, Now, mga kapatid, okay, I'm going, and I have all the authority, and I'm telling you, go and make disciples. In short, parang resident evil yung dating nito. All the world is spiritually dead, and only you have the antidote, which is the gospel. Therefore, you cannot die. Take good care of it. Take, uh, take your gospel guns okay? and, and start shooting on people with the gospel. All right? In short, we want you to make disciples. And that is the context of making disciples. When Christ made that commission, He was saying, there's a lost and dying world out there and only you have the antidote and only you have the solution. You've got to spread this message because there's no plan B. Plan A is the church and plan B, there's no plan B. Okay? This is not Jesus yet. All right. You, you get the point? The church is the only organization in the world that exists for its non members. Okay? Remember this. We are the only organization in the world that is so concerned with our non members. Yes, we're concerned with our members. We love you with the love of the Lord. Right? But we love the people who haven't heard the gospel. And it is our goal to go and make disciples of all peoples, right? Yeah, have you watched Avengers, right? Yeah, para tayong Avengers. When the Avengers were assembled, the Avengers were not assembled so that they would tell stories about all their exploits. Hindi naman dumating doon si Nick Fury and said, you know what, Captain America, during my time, oh, Tony Stark did not came. Pakita niyo yung picture ng Avengers na para magets nila. All right? All right. Hindi pumunta si Tito Fury doon. Okay. When we have staff meetings here, we talk only about two things. Okay. We talk only about two things. Number one, how to honor God. That's why we pray before we start our staff meeting. Number two, is all we talk about people. We're not talking about buildings or budgets. Yes, there's a time for doing that, but we don't talk about that weekly. What consumes us every time we meet is how can we empower our people to go and make disciples. And that's our agenda every week. It's always the same agenda every week. How can we have more people come to our church who are lost and who don't know Jesus? How can we make this a safe environment for the lost? And at the same time, an environment where lost can be discipled and Christians can be empowered. How can we afflict the comfortable Christians here? That is our agenda. How can we disturb the minds of Christians who just go to church to listen to messages and do nothing? Ano ba pwede natin gawin this week? Right? This is what we talk about. 
we don't talk about, you know, during my time in youth ministry. And Tito would say, oh, during the 70s. You know, our prayer is God give us new stories to tell. Lord, we don't want to dwell on the success of the past. We want to go and make disciples. Lord, empower me to tell new stories of how lives are changed, how marriages are restored, how discipleship is working. You know, the church could be likened to a lighthouse. There's a story about this lighthouse that was on a very dangerous seacoast. And there were a lot of shipwrecks happening. And so, there was just only one boat in that uh, life-saving station and a few devoted members. And they kept watch over the sea night and day with no thought for themselves. They were doing it out for love and sacrifice. They went day and night tirelessly searching for lost people. Many lives were saved by this wonderful little station so that it became famous. Some of those who were saved and various others in the surrounding areas wanted to become associated with this uh, life-saving station. So they give their time and their money and effort for the support of the work. New boats were bought and new crews were trained. The little life station started growing. Now, some of the new members of the life-saving station were unhappy that the building was so crude. Ay, kailangan natin improve yung paints dito, yung nagchichip na yung ibang ano. Payusin natin. They felt that it needed to be a more comfortable place so that those who are being rescued can relax after being rescued. So they replaced the emergency cots and with beds and put better furniture. They put sofa, a 55-inch TV, did everything, all right, to make it so beautiful. And they redecorated it beautifully and furnished a lot of stuff. Now, less of the members were now interested in going to the sea on life-saving mission, so they hired lifeboat crews to do this work. The mission of the life-saving station was still given lip service, but most were too busy or lacked necessary commitment to take part in life-saving activities personally. About this time, there was a very large ship that, that was wrecked off the coast, and the hired crews brought them in, and, and, and they were wet, they were dirty, and so they started sitting on the sofa, and it started getting dirty, the carpet was getting dirty, some were puking, and so the members were saying, this is not right. Our furnitures, sinisira nila, ang baho, we need more Lysol here, right? And they were complaining because the life-saving station has become now a clubhouse, and they've lost the mission of the life-saving station. And so they said, we have to do something about this. But some members insisted that this is a life-giving station and not a clubhouse. So they had a votation and they were separated into two. And the others built a new life-saving station. But over the years, the same pattern happened. Now you go to a lot of sequels today, what do you see? You see a lot of clubhouse and not a lot of life-saving station. The church could end up like this. Where the People inside the church are just thinking about how I can be more comfortable, how we can have more nice chairs, and how the carpet should be clean, you know, and how the CR should be washed, and it should be uh, uh, powdery fresh, you know, and there should be flowers there, you know. And we're thinking now not of the loss, but we're thinking about what can the church do for me. For a lot of us, we've lost the heart of why the church was planted. We were deliberate. First year we said, this is a church for lost people. We will get Christians who are hungry to make disciples because we want more people saved and discipled. That's why we started with only 80 leaders who were hungry to see lost people saved. Some of you are here today because somebody invited you. But what you don't know is that they did not invite you to a clubhouse. They invited you to a life-saving station. This is who we are as a church. And we're unapologetical about it. We would continue to make disciples. We would continue to save lost people. We would continue to attract people here who needs to hear the gospel. And what we don't need are people who just come here and just consume Whatever it is that we give. The church is no clubhouse. The church is not a place to make bad people good. The church is a place where we see dead people live. 
This is the mission of our church. Meron tayong tinatawag na YMCA in downtown Manila. We now have a little work there. We have around 50, 60 people attending our victory groups in YMCA. And they gave the place for us to us for free. Why? Because one of our pastors said, this is YMCA, right? Young Men's Christian Association. Do you have any Christian activities here? They said, no, we don't have. But you're Christian. How come there's no Christian activity? Give me a room. Right? Let's put a Christian activity here. Sometimes we can lose the vision of why an organization was created. YMCA was not built for basketball and volleyball and swimming. It's built for Christian men to come in there and have fellowship and spread the gospel in their city. We should not be in the comfort zone. Dapat nandun tayo sa danger zone. Christians were not meant to live in the comfort zone. Yes, there's time of refuge. You come to church, you're hurt, you need help, you need prayer, but you can't stay there for a long time. You've always got to go out of your comfort zone and enter into the highway of the danger zone. Na, na, na. Sabi ni Kenny Loggins yun. Here's the reason why the vision still lives and the fire will never die. Why we're still harping the same message after 28 years. Number one, okay? in Matthew 16, 18, let me repeat this verse. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why? Because number one, Jesus built a victorious church. God is calling us to build with him. Jesus is our leader. He is our senior pastor. He is in the business of empowering imperfect people to spread the gospel. You know, start reading the book of Acts and you get excited with what God is doing. Pag binasa mo yung book of Acts, doon mo makita, wow, this is church. In our victory group now, we're going through the book of Acts. Right? That's our assignment. We read Acts 1 to Acts uh, chapter 6. And because we want to look at what God is doing. And here's an example of what God was doing in the New Testament church. Acts 2, 41 to 47. So those who received His word were baptized. And there were, uh, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they had received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. What was happen- happening in the New Testament church? The word was being preached. The gospel was being preached. People were getting baptized. Laws were added. Signs and wonders were happening. Um, extreme generosity was being practiced. There was unity and there was fellowship. The church was alive. It was news. It was headlines. The church was making waves. The church was not found in the obituary section of Manila Bulletin. All right? It's in the headlines of what God is doing, and there's something supernatural in it. And we as a church, we need to understand this. If I come here 180 hours a year, I need to experience something supernatural. I need to experience and see people's lives being transformed and changed. I need to take part in what God is doing in this church. This should be the normal life of the church. The natural church is a supernatural church. In short, we can't be wimpy. We can't be shy. A Christian ako eh. And secret, ah? No, it's not. I need to share and spread the news. You know, some of us, some of us here, some of you are saying, now how can I share the gospel in my office? Step one. Simple lang to. Step one. Say that you're a Christian. Kakain kayo, di ba? Pare, pray lang ako kasi Christian ako eh. <gasps> Ten years na tayo magkasama. Hindi halata. Okay. Sometimes it's so simple. Just say, I'm a Christian. And that's step one. All right? Later on, they would look at you and they would see your life. And I hope it adds up 
to, your, to what you profess, that you are actually a Christian. And then they would see, and they would see something different in you, and they would start to ask questions. And sometimes you can even be the one to initiate converse, uh, conversations. Why? Because you're now a Christian, and they know it. And you're not secret Christian man in the office. Okay. We have to be who God wants us to be as a church. We have to be a victorious church. They have to know, I'm the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm called to go and make disciples. Would our city, would the people in our city feel something if the church closes tomorrow? Would people say, Ha, ah, you victory na wala? Ha, ah, paano na tayo? Parang ganon. Okay? Would they feel it? Or it's like nothing happened. Are we really making disciples and transforming our city? Or are we just having church? You know, it cannot be business as usual here. It can be Sunday, let's open the doors. Sunday night, let's close the doors and nothing happens. Church cannot be business as usual. We need to empower people to spread the message. We need people to have vision buy-in. What do I mean? Alam mo, may tatlong levels of vision buy-in. Okay? First level is this. You look where, what level you are. Huh? The people believe in the vision enough to benefit from it. Oh, I love victory. They honor God and they make disciples. I'm benefiting from it. My wife is now submissive. My kids are very good. That's okay. That's why we go to church. This is good. We benefit from it. That's level one. And we don't want you to be stuck with level one. Level two, level two, yeah. The people believe in the vision enough to contribute comfortably. Oh, this is nice. The church is nice. Honor God, make disciples. Let me give 50 pesos for this move of God. Or let me give my tithes for this move of God. That's level two. We don't want people also to be stuck in level two. A lot of us were stuck in level two. We're doing something that would not, you know, uh, what do you call this? Yung hindi perwisyo sa atin. Basta kung may may patawag yung church about certain activities, as long as it's comfortable for me, uh, I'm part of that. Count me in. But if it's not comfortable, we're not there. What we pray is that our people would start moving to level three vision buy-in, which is this. The people believe in the vision enough to give their lives to it. I'm giving my life here. I'll fling my life here. I, I'll invest in my spiritual family because this is where God has called me. Ito ang local church ko. Love ko ang local church ko. Okay. Alam ko na may ginagawa si, si God sa local church ko and I recognize the move of God and I want to take part in that. That's the kind of level, uh, third level vision buy-in we want from everyone. And this is our prayer. That we won't just do things because it's comfortable, it's okay, pero wala na ako dyan pag hindi na komportable. Mark 1 verse 14 to 20. Now, after John was arrested, talking about vision buy-in, John was arrested. Okay. Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Right? Jesus was so pumped up, he said, The kingdom of God is coming. We want you to repent and believe in the gospel. And what happened next? Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And what happened? Verse 20. Next slide. And immediately, he called them and they left their nets. And their father said in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. It was a weaky moment at the time. They saw something that they could fling their life into because the vision was so big. The local church is the hope of the world. We have to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And it would take an immediate response from the people to leave their nets and follow Jesus. Now, we're not telling you to quit your business, but we're telling you the same attitude and spirit that these disciples had, that they saw the vision and they're saying, we're flinging our lives into it. In the early days, we would always tell people, you needed three things to be a world changer. Alam nyo ba, every week noon, nung youth kami, the youth pastor would always tell us, you are a world changer. Kami naman, I use world changer. All right? 
But then, because it was every week, we were being brainwashed already. Wow, I'm a world changer. And they said, you needed three things. Number one, you needed your Bible. Kaya lahat kami nun, pagpunta ng church, may Bible. Second, he said, you need a notebook. Kaya pagdating namin, may notebook with a ball pen. All right? And third thing, they, they would always say, you need a passport. What passport? Why would I need a passport? Because you're going to change the world. Yeah! I would never have thought that God would use me to go to different nations and preach the gospel. But I've experienced that. Why? Because it was told to us when we were young and we were able to see the vision. Some of your senior pastors today in Victory grew up in the province. Mga provinciano. Okay. But it doesn't really matter. Once you have your Bible, your notebook, and your passport, and dito na yung dalawa, Bible notebook, yes, electric, okay? And your passport, you can change the world. Matthew eleven twelve. from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Violent nito, all right? What Jesus was saying, you want the kingdom of God to advance, there needs to, have, there needs to be some violent uh, aspect into it. We can't be soft. In making disciples, we have to make disciples. We have to start claiming our offices, our campuses for Christ. And really declaring it, ang campus ko para kay Jesus. Lord, let me do anything here to go and make disciples to my classmates, office mates ko, sa mga employees ko, sa employer ko. Lord, wala akong pipiliin, basta may damit. Okay? I will make disciples. Why? Because the scripture says, if we want to advance the kingdom of God, since the church is always in motion, you've got that violent men taking it by force. When the church, Erwin McManus said, when the church becomes an institution, people are nothing more than volunteers to be recruited. But when the church is a movement, our stewardship becomes the unleashing of God-given gifts, talents, and passions. You see, if your church is full of members, you get an occasional missionary. But if your church is full of missionaries, the rest is just about geography. Most churches don't send missionaries because they don't have any. What we want to do is to empower every member to be a minister. I heard that when 1992. Every member here in Victory is a minister. A home minister? Yep. Everybody here is a minister. I can minister? Yes. I was just ordained last week. Okay. In short, I don't need an ordination to do the work that God has called me to do. Right? Ordained naman ako sa West, no? Okay. Pero yung norm, formal ordination was just last week. It means I don't need the title to preach the gospel. I don't need the title to gather my friends so that I could preach the word of God and make disciples. I don't need that. What I need is for me to be compelled by the love of Christ that would push me, compel me to go and make disciples. Hindi na to pinipilit sa akin. Nobody had to tie my hands and say, Dennis, mag make disciples ka. Nobody needed to force me. I understood the gospel, how the gospel has changed my life. And therefore, the immediate reaction is, how can we spread this? How can we spread the word? The church should be on the move. In Acts 5, verse 12 to 16, let me end with this verse. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest there joined them, but people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, then that as Peter came by, at least a shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from towns and, and Jerusalem around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. God was doing something in their midst. There was an evident move of the Spirit of God when the church empowers the people to spread the gospel. What we want you to do, and let me end with this now. Think with me. Think, think, all right? We have the most powerful message of all. 
the gospel. It's in our hands. All right? It means the ultimate problem of man's sin, the only solution, Christ. I have the message. I have a vehicle that God has given me, the local church. Okay? And I have the only solution to spread the message that Jesus Christ has patterned for us in the New Testament, discipleship. We all have those three. Okay, our goal is to get this message that is so powerful, get involved in local church, and start spreading the gospel through discipleship. Yeah. Some of us, we have a hard time. Why? Because we have the message, but we're not part of the local church. We're visitors. We have no responsibility. If anything happens to you, nobody knows. You're alone. Yeah. In a group this big, you are alone because you're not connected. We want to connect you through discipleship. Right? And some of you, that's your next step. Right? So we call two prayers lang, diba, for the next two weeks. Number one, Lord, is this the local church for me? If the answer is yes, step two. Okay? Lord, connect mo na ako dito. Willing na ako to be connected. Not to be a lone ranger, not to be alone in this walk with you, not to be alone in this adventure, but to have other people around me. Right? Now, it's your choice. We won't force you. Again, we won't force you. In fact, you know, the past 10 weeks, we have 200 new people in victory groups that have been attending for the past 10 weeks in our Wednesday. People who haven't been in church, they're now starting to come to church because of our Wednesday discipleship group. Wednesday is our discipleship day here. We open up this place for discipleship. Yung inaano sa amin every week. Imagine 200 new people who are so hungry every week coming here. Some of them as far as Nobaliches would come here. Why? Because they saw it. They see something that God is doing and they're saying, I want to be part of this. Some of them are now part of the church. And they're really doing great. Right? We wouldn't force people to get connected. But we're opening up this option for you. If you say, yes, Victory Green Hills is my local church, second thing, Lord, help me get connected. As you get connected, that's when the empowering starts to happen. We cannot empower people who are not connected because we don't know what you will teach okay? or how you will act because we don't know who you are. But we want you to be connected and be involved in discipleship. I've never get tired of making disciples. I just finished doing one-to-one with a young man. I still meet up with my victory group every Sunday, 2 p.m. That's why I'm not preaching in the 2 p.m. because I know discipleship is far more important than preaching here on the pulpit every Sunday. Preaching, I can delegate. Discipleship is the role of every believer. In short, let's go and make disciples. We want you to pray about it. You have four weeks. We'll have four weeks where we will challenge you. Okay? You have a week to pray about it. Lord, is this my local church? Okay. After next week's preaching, you pray again. Now I could see what, who they are and what they value. Okay. Then the next three weeks, we want to challenge you to get connected to one of our victory groups.